Good evening, and thank you so much for joining us for Good News on Entertainment tonight. I'm your host, Carly Boyette. We have a packed show, so let's jump right in. First tonight, there is a film coming to theater soon that captures a very famous true story on stage. The movie is called The Hiding Place. Of course, you probably know that is also a very famous book by the same name. It is the incredible true story of Corrie Ten Boom and her family during World War II. They lived in the Netherlands and risked everything to hide Jewish refugees by the hundreds. The Hiding Place is their story of faith, hope, love, and forgiveness in the face of unthinkable evil. Again, the movie is coming to theaters for two nights only, August 3rd and 5th. Take a look. <laughs> I'm very excited to talk with you today and hear more about this film coming to theaters. And it's just so interesting because this is so different. There's been a couple productions that have gone from stage to film, but this is really the heart of what this project is, is combining the two right from the beginning, which is so different. Yeah. Yeah, it is a unique thing. Um, I, I've never been a part of one that has sort of approached it this way. We've approached something with like a production that you archive, but we never really product, really produced something that we approached um, fully presented on stage and then recorded it in a cinematic fashion. So yeah, it's very different. So talk about your role, because I want to make sure people know as you were speaking about this story, which I'm just so excited that more people are getting to know about her story. We'll talk about that in a moment. More people need to know. Um, but talk about kind of your role in all of this. And I do think it's unique as a stage director that you also do have to think about film and how it's going to be in theaters as well. Yes, it is. It's it's an, been an incredible learning process in that as well. But uh, I'm one of the producers from the beginning. And uh, so I produced the film, but also uh, uh, for the stage version that we recorded, I was the stage director and the costume set designer. So a little bit of the, the vision behind the stage production. And then I got to be a producer on the filming of it. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So explain how this works and how you guys, your team is telling her story. Of course, we're talking about Corey Ten Boom, which again, let's go ahead and address it. I told you before we got started, I feel like there's two groups of people, people that know her story, mm -hmm. love her story. And then you have this whole other group, a whole nother generation now yeah. that hasn't heard about her. And I feel like I'm somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm eager to, to hear more about uh, what has inspired you. And then I think what can inspire a whole new generation of um, kind of really God's forgiveness and love and, and how we go outside of what the rules are, um, mm -hmm. you know, to love others. Yeah. I mean, as the guiding principle, let me say, it is truly the thing that propelled them forward. Uh, so, uh, I mean, initially my, my involvement, you know, was as we wanted to bring it to the stage, we thought, well, I, I mean, I grew up on the tale. So I read it as a kid in um, school. And then I also saw the film that was done in the 1970s. Um, I saw that version as a kid and I was always touched by it. I was always inspired by it. There was something, there was something in the secretiveness. There was something in the miraculous courage of this family. And um, I was always moved by the, all the elements. And um, so I feel like it has always been sort of there as a base. And, you know, Corey's story really came to light through Billy Graham's, um, the film, he produced the film, but they, they really lifted that tale. So when you were talking about generationally, there was, um, while I was really young at that point, um, there was my parents, everybody read the book at that point because Billy Graham had really lifted it up. So there was a major, uh, level for her to reach so many Christians, uh, with her in story, her incredible story. Um, but there hasn't been a huge resurgence. So we got this 
big, huge thing in like the late seventies, early eighties, and everybody knew about it. And then it's just sort of teetered off a little bit and been a little bit more, dare I say, underground. Um, it's still very relevant. People still read it, but it hasn't had a new iteration. And that was really a motivation that we had, was really wanting to see a new generation of people come to know and love the story, as well as those that already knew it before, see it with fresh eyes. What do you think is, um, because my first thought may be, well, why don't we just remake the movie? Mm -hmm. Why don't we, you know, and I, there's still that may come later, but why a stage, um, you know, portion of this, of this story and this production of it, explain why that drew you in and why you say this is why, and this is the time to do this type of storytelling. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I hope to answer it well. I mean, I, number one, as an artist, it's something that I've really been wanting to do between my world of theater and cinema. I, everything I present on stage, which you would see in this film, I try and bring theatrical cinematic qualities to the theater. And then I love when film is going theatrical and not just realism. There is so much more in our world than just realism because realism is what it looked like, what happened, but there is also what it felt like, the emotions behind things that can start to shape things as well. So even in our production, the way that we have, the way that we go from one scene to the next is very cinematic. And now that is typically in a live show. So kind of putting the world, I just feel like that's what I've done is I've spent most of my time trying to blur those two lines. And I love that we get a chance to do that. But why on stage first? I would say um, the, the great part about this, and we've already been hit up, so many people want to license it to tell this in their high school, in their community, in regional theater, that there wasn't a play version for them to tell this story. And when you look at other incredible classics like Sound of Music and others that are both historical and moving, um, those have such a life within these communities being told over and over and over again, but there was nothing for Corey's story. And I think it had really, it had really given that gap that you were talking about. And I believe that the stage version is going to help bridge that gap. I was now, gonna say, so is your answer yes, that schools and different things oh, yes. can eventually use it? Okay. Anyone yeah. can. And I think you know, the best way to learn the story is to live through it and to really memorize the lines and, and feel every bit of it. But then why the film added to it? And I think that that just takes the ideas. Um, we also didn't want to challenge the old movie. You know what I mean? Like it was a new, that's new. We wanted everything to be new. We were not replacing anything. We feel like you can, add, you can read the book, you can watch the 70s film and you can watch our film and maybe see it on stage too. All of those are an experience the audience can just find a richer, deeper connection to Corey's story. And anytime something is as powerful as this, I personally watch them again and again and again. I just want almost like memorization. I want the, um, the power to sort of uh, continue to inspire me. And so can we you, love. Can you talk about that personally and how her story, and I can't imagine kind of living with this day in and day out. Yeah. Um, but talk about that, because, again, I think there's a new generation that needs to know what she did, what she sacrificed yeah. um, and who she followed. Right. And, you know, I don't want to put it. It's hard to put it in a nutshell because there's so many elements to it. And I, I never want to belittle her incredible tale. Um, but the power of the family that really started with the father and the grandfather that you you find their legacy. Um, one thing that was interesting is during the moments in our play. Uh, where they're in the living room harboring Jews that were um, under persecution, their grandfather had started praying for the Jewish people in that same living room a hundred years before. He just felt convicted. And there was nothing at that time politically that necessarily drove that. I don't want to speak for him, but it, he wasn't, he didn't know the future. He didn't know what was coming. So it was just a, such an incredible thing to see that that family cared about the Jews and um, their, their history and their plight and there's a culture. They really cared about them way before they ever had to really act on it. And But then the thing that compels me is when you did have the Holocaust happening and they did 
become a part of the underground, they, it wasn't people they knew. So it was not a case where they said, oh, we love our neighbor across the street and down the street, and we're going to harbor them to safety because we know and we love them. They literally had somewhere near 600 to 800 people come through their home on their way to safety. And they, they put their lives on the line to, to our, offer safe harbor for them. That was more powerful to me, that it wasn't always a personal relationship, but it was a true conviction of this isn't right. And I will literally put my safety at risk in order to do the right thing. And I love as um, Casper, their father says um, that he will open, his home is open to anyone who knocks. And I love that their protest is not anger. Their protest is not violence. Their protest is not um, in any way uh, conniving. They even struggled with how do I lie if I were asked. But their protest was love and hospitality. And we have that, a lot to learn from that. Oh, <laughs> all of this, we need to hear it again and again yes. and again. And it was for people that were different from them. Yeah. Mm. Like, mm. Yep, talk about really, being relevant today. Oh, and they really, if you read as, as they really take the principles of Jesus's teachings and put it into action. And, and then you've got the whole story of forgiveness that comes up at the end of this tale. That is the most convicting part. Of so I feel like there's so many layers to this story that can challenge us. I always ask myself, would I do the same? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm strong enough. And that is a, I think it's good to question that for ourselves and really know um, we never would want a, a situation to continue being like that. But it is interesting to think, what would I do? What would I do? And I love that this is why it's recorded. This is why I'm assuming we want everyone to go in the theater and see this, yes. but I'm assuming people can eventually watch it at home uh, over and over again, because again, I just, there is so much packed in here and so much to learn from this family. Uh, mm -hmm. So we are going to continue to get the word out and get people again in the theater. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for what you've been doing, bringing life back to this story. Uh, I'll give you the last word. Why should people go see this? What do you hope they take away from this? It's hard to say different than the last word that we just kind of mentioned. But I think loving people that are different from us, loving people that are around us, and allowing our protest to be love. Well, Matt, thank you so much. I look forward to hopefully uh, catching up with you again on maybe what your next project is. And uh, again, hopefully we'll see this in schools and other uh, yeah. different avenues across the country, maybe even the world as well. So wouldn't that be amazing? Yes, it would. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. You are a Christian. Yes, I am. Is there not a commandment that condemns those that bear false witness? There is. But you consider serious. yourself exempt from it. No. I... The fact is, Fraulein, you are no heroine protecting the weak. You are no martyr who will be remembered. What you are is simple. You are a liar. Tell me, Fraulein, what does God think of those who lie? Those who steal, those who hide secrets from the law. Has your God not put the authorities in their places? Does he not command you to obey those that he has raised up? We kept no Jews. We conducted no raids. Perhaps it would help if you considered me a priest. Consider this room your confessional. Tell me your sins. I will absolve you. I will forgive you. The truth will set you free. Confess. We kept no Jews. We conducted no raids. We kept no Jews. We conducted no Do raids. you know your father and your sister have already confessed? Your brother is writing his confession even now. We know everything. You save no one with your lies. You protect nothing with your silence. Confess. Again, August 3rd and 5th are the dates the movie is in theaters. Just go to thehidingplacefilm.com for more ticket info. 
Okay, speaking of films, I now want to introduce you to an independent film company called Canyon Productions. They have produced several films that are currently streaming on Pure Flix and have a few more coming out this fall. But the founder and CEO, Sean Bosky, has a fascinating story of his own. In fact, before his long successful career with Pure Flix, he was a professional baseball player. And he says that career actually helped him to overcome curveballs in the film industry. Well, Sean, I'm so excited uh, to talk with you, hear a little bit more about your story. And the first thing that catches uh, my attention, uh, which I just mentioned, is the fact that you had this awesome baseball career and then took this huge pivot and now working in movies and entertainment and film. And I can't wait to hear more about this huge life change uh, that I'm all in for. Well, thank you for having me, Carly. Yeah, I think of it as an adventure. Um, when I broke into Major League Baseball, I remember thinking to myself, how did this happen? I'm just Sean from Reno, Nevada. And then you're standing on the mound with cameras and audience and stadium. And uh, it's a surreal experience. But, um, but, you know, at the end of the day, when I look back at my life, I know that God's the author. So we try to work hard and try to figure out the, the mystery as we go forward. But at the end of the day, he's the one that's weaving it all together. So I'm grateful that I did get to play baseball and that we can talk about that for a long time. Um, but I just really view uh, any of the aspects of my career have really been designed by him. So I just give him thanks for it. Isn't it amazing? That's how I feel my story is. And I meet so many uh, people like yourself that where you look back and you say, man, look what God was doing and look how he could orchestrate everything just perfectly when you surrender um, your life to him. Uh, but talk about, I guess, were you always a fan of movies and film? Um, and then also, is I mean, how do we merge these two in your life? Yeah, yeah. I, I've, that is the story that I'm trying to tell people regularly because they go, how did you get from baseball to a legal nonprofit organization to movie industry? Um, and it And it's kind of a natural evolution at this point, but here's how it happened. Playing baseball, you learn all sorts of things about life in general, of course. And I had a, a lot of opportunity. I became a, a follower of Christ when I was playing in the minor leagues. And the first book that I read was Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis. Loved it. But I became, I just, it turns out God wired me this way. I, I just loved reading. So I was reading every Christian book that was coming out in the, you know, early 90s, late 80s, early 90s. And growing in my faith and becoming, you know, reasonably well read. And what that did is it just shaped me for the future where when my baseball career was over, I could step pretty seamlessly into a fundraising position at Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a religious freedom um, legal organization and advocates for Christians across the country their rights and for the spread of the gospel to keep the door open for it. So I loved doing that. I met with a lot of people around the country that have a heart for our biblical heritage in this country, for the culture, and to see people still have access to the, the gospel, whether they're kids in schools or they're adults that just want to put up a nativity scene in town and you name it, all sorts of things where we're, you know, we're in a world at war. So um, I loved that. I became the head of fundraising for them, which put me in touch with a lot of Christians around the country. And so when I met one of the founders of Pure Flix, uh, they, movies need money. So they knew that I knew people that had money. <laughs> so, so uh, but I was really motivated by the larger impact that movies can have on, um, on society. Because storytelling, you know, let's face it, Jesus told stories to communicate spiritual truth. And that when you when you put together really great art, whether it's music or 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 a movie or a television show or those sorts of things, they can really inspire people. So that drew me in. I was um, asked to join in and 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 we got started. And there's been a lot of things that have happened over the last 10 years in the in this arena. Yeah. So talk about um, some things you're working on now that you want to let people uh, know about, because again, I, we could talk for hours. This is going to be trouble because 
I really do. I believe wholeheartedly that this is just another tool. And I'm so impressed at where we are um, at this point in time with how Christians are using those tools and, you know, better than any time before we're, mm-hmm. there's a lot of good quality content that I think um, as Christians deserves to be put out there. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, there's a exhi- exhibit A is happening right now with the movie Sound of Freedom, uh, competing head to head with the Disney um, Raiders of the Lost Ark movie, and and it had beat it, you know, in the opening weekend, and that was really interesting. There is a lot of good things going on, and and the quality is gotten better and it's continuing to get better um and so i have a couple of movies that are coming out here shortly that that i'm really excited about i think they're going to really encourage uh people of faith i think that people that don't know god are going to be drawn in by these movies um and one is a story it's called divine influencer and it's a story of a young woman that's a social media influencer 20 some something grew up with kind of silver spoon very affluent and her parents cut, decide to cut her off because she's being irresponsible. And that changes her life dramatically when all of a sudden now she needs to be responsible. But she ends up gravitating toward a homeless shelter. And then she finds out that her previous social media influence was really pretty f- flimsy. And she's tested on what real influence means. And it's it's encouraging because you can see God at work in her life throughout the story. So it's a fun riches to rags story, but with a great message. And uh, Lada Silva is the lead in that movie. And she is one of the cast from The Chosen. And she's yep. just a sweet, wonderful actor that manages to make a really self-consumed, narcissistic character very likable yeah because she's just kind of fun and uh, not mean-spirited at all but just uh you know kind of unawarely um you know selfish but then she does grow and change through the course of the movie so it's tons of fun that's i relate so well to that because i was in mainstream media and was promoting all sorts of things not for social media but just because that's what i was in mainstream media and i had this moment where i thought here I am an ambassador and promoting all of these other things when we should be ambassadors of Christ and living that life. So I just love that that message is getting out in a, in a movie like this. I think it's so needed, whatever your profession is. Oh, that's you know, great. Just, yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be encouraging. Let's face it. Yeah. Social media is everywhere. So I think people will relate. They'll understand it's done really well by Sherry Rigby and her production team so I'm excited about that one. And then there's another movie coming out here shortly called Finding Faith. A young Christian advice columnist suffers her own crisis of faith when somebody writes in to say, I just don't feel like God's with me. And at the time, her own marriage is starting to crumble in front of her eyes and one of her parents passes away. And so she goes through her journey of really trying to understand the depth of what God is doing in her life. And it's very emotional, um, but just wonderfully done movie um, by some veteran filmmakers. They shot it down in Mississippi. And, and I had a um, chance to talk with Ashley, the, the lead in that. And, and it was interesting to hear what the storyline even meant for the actors. And I know we talked about John Schneider and how what he walked through um, during the filming of this as well. And that's why I also love these movies. They impact not only people who watch them, the people who make them. I mean, it's just this ripple effect. Absolutely. And that that is, again, one of the, the blessings of it is that, that if you happen to find a story that really resonates, it can carry a long way. Um, it can impact the crew. People that you're not seeing on film can be impacted by the culture that you set up when you're filming a movie. It's yeah. so intriguing. Um, and I really, I do have a ton of respect for filmmakers. It's a hard world um, and they have a lot of passion for it. They have to. Because when you go visit the set, I mean, it's not, there's not a lot of glamour there. <laughs> so Work. Uh, I will right. end on this only because you brought up Sound of Freedom. And this is why I love um, this show so much, because I, I think it just speaks volumes to the content that we consume. I think, you know, Sound of Freedom is putting a huge spotlight on that, right? And what we allow our kids to watch or families to watch, Um. So I just, you know, if you could maybe address that, I'm just so proud of your company and Pure Flix um, for con- 
continuing to put out this content that is so needed because I don't even think this generation fully realizes um, because it's just so different than what it was 15 years ago on what we consume and what that puts out. Yeah, it's true. Uh, the The culture is is coming in fast and hard, and uh, there are Christian families around the country and the world that are saying we really need need another place um, to find entertainment that's also encouraging and and isn't going to really ambush you with some things that violate your conscience. So I'm I am encouraged by Pure Flix. Um, there's other companies that are doing this too that are coming on, which is great. It's it's good for everybody when there's more competition. Um, Kingdom, um, Great American Media, that is now joint venture with PureFlix. Uh, there's a good wholesome. You know, you don't have to fear that you're you're going to have some problems with the content. But with PureFlix, there's tons of different things for the whole family. Kids content. Um, there's documentaries. There's movies. There's C- series. All that. So it is another alternative in today's world. We need it. Yep, we do. Well, thank you uh, for all of uh, what you're doing and using your skill set to be adding to this. And I look forward to hopefully talking with you again and hearing about other future projects, because uh, as we mentioned, the demand is high and uh, we need good quality. And that is what your team has been doing. So uh, thank you for all that you've been doing. And uh, we'll see what God does with it. It's going to be fun to watch. Terrific. Well, thank you. Good being with you, Carly. Who bought all this adorable stuff? It's moi. I love influencing people, like where to shop, who to know. Hi, Mom. We're cutting you off financially. No. We're only doing this because we love you. I used to have the most amazing life, a beautiful home. My life is in shambles. I need to sell some of these. No, Bruno, freeze! Olivia, I had the locker next to yours. I work at Harvest Rescue Mission. I was hoping you might have a job for me. You'd have to live here and... I'd have to live here? I'm asking you to put her to work. I guess it can't get any worse than this. Oh, okay. I get it. Just running out of money. We'll have to close the shelter. That's not an option. How can I help? You know, the shelter is a place for second chances. Could influence people here. You've got to plan something that people believe they can't afford to miss. Live might just rescue our rescue mission. Divine Influencer and Finding Faith are the two films that will be coming to Pure Flix soon, thanks to Canyon Productions. Of course, we'll keep you posted right here. We hope you enjoyed tonight's show and got you excited about some faith-based films and shows to watch with your family. Again, I'm Carly Boyette, and I look forward to seeing you right here next week on your Christian television network.